Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today we're wrapping up 2025 by going over the current GPU market from top to bottom to give you our picks at each price point. There is a lot of GPUs to go over, but before we get into it, today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Wolfbox and their Megaflow handheld turbo fans. The Megaflow 100 features a 150,000 RPM brushless motor that enables a wind speed of 45 meters per second and offers up to 100 minutes of runtime. This makes it ideal for heavy duty tasks like cleaning your PC, while still being capable of easier jobs with variable speed control. There's also the Megaflow 50, a more budget friendly option that still packs impressive power with a 110,000 RPM motor, three speed settings, and up to 240 minutes of runtime. Both models come with a handful of attachments and are charged via USB Type-C for maximum convenience. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. Okay, so let's start with the most affordable options and work our way up to the most expensive. And the good news is most current generation GPUs have finally hit their MSRPs, meaning pricing and availability is about as good as it's been for at least a year now. Of course, DRAM pricing sucks and the current generation isn't nearly as good as we'd hoped for, but hey, at least you can now buy them at the advertised prices. So let's wrap up 2025's GPU market. We'll start with the most affordable discrete GPU options, and there are a few choices here, though sadly none of them are particularly good, all with glaring issues. The cheapest currently available options include the RTX 3050 6GB for $180, complete garbage that one so we can just skip right over it, and even worse are somehow AMD's Radeon RX 6500 XT 4GB for $210, that thing is a true abomination. Things start to recover in a big way with Intel's Arc B570. Not the fastest thing out there, but at $210 US it's cheap and you get 10 gigabytes of VRAM. The RX 7600 is still getting around for $240, but I'd skip that because the B580 for $250 US is a much better deal and we're now getting to the real contenders. Another old but still viable option is the RTX 3060 for $250, the same price as the RTX 5050. And then we have the slightly discounted RTX 5060 at $280, while the RX 9060 XT 8GB can be had for $280 as well. Now, the B580 is on average around 15% faster than the B570, and it has an extra 2GB of VRAM, but currently it costs almost 20% more. So either option is viable in my opinion. Personally though, I'd purchase the B580 for $40 more. It's a solid offering at $250 and much better than the RX 7600 and RTX 3060. It's also considerably better than the RTX 5050, delivering similar performance to the RTX 5060. The RTX 5060 though is trumped by the 9060 XT 8GB with the Radeon GPU around 15-20% to faster than the B580 while costing just 12% more, but it has less VRAM, though FSR4 is impressive. So, when it all boils down to it, the 9060 XT 8GB is probably the best value sub $300 US product, but the B580 is also very good and certainly a viable alternative. As important as VRAM is, and as much as we personally hate AMD and NVIDIA still selling current generation discrete GPUs with just 8GB of VRAM, it's not absolutely everything. If the 9060 XT 8GB say only matched the performance of the B580 and lacked superior upscaling, then we wouldn't bother with it. But as it stands, it is generally a good bit faster. Stepping up to the $300 to $500 price range, there aren't that many options right now. In fact, there's really just two viable options, the Radeon RX 9060 XT 16GB or GeForce RTX 5060 Ti 16GB. Both of course have 16GB of VRAM, though both have a stinky 8GB version under the exact same name, proving once again that both AMD and Nvidia suck and don't care about you consumers. Moving on from that sad realization though, we have to pick which of these GPUs is the best choice. The 9060 XT is the cheaper of the two, coming in at $350 US, whereas the 5060 Ti currently commands an $80 US premium, coming in at $430 US. That makes the 5060 Ti 23% more expensive, and based on our most recent testing, it's around 9% faster. 
either at native 1440p or with upscaling, so FSR4 versus DLSS4. Based on all of that, the Radeon GPU is the better value choice in our opinion, offering a similar cost per frame with similar upscaling quality when FSR4 is supported. The 5060 Ti is technically better at heavy ray tracing, but it's also so poor when it comes to heavy ray tracing that it only wins by a technicality and nothing more. And that means for usable levels of ray tracing, there is very little difference between the two. So all said and done, they are quite similar. The 9060 XT is just available at a much lower price point, affording it a better cost per frame ratio, and therefore making it a number one pick in the $300 to $500 US price range. Now in the five to $600 price range, we have two options, the Radeon RX 9070 or GeForce RTX 5070, and this is a tough category. Currently both are priced at $540 US, so you're looking at pretty much the same price point or very close to, though of course pricing does vary from one region to the next, so be sure to check out our monthly GPU pricing guides, which cover 10 key regions. For context, our recent 23 game benchmark comparing these two GPUs found that on average the RX 9070 was 13% fast when comparing performance at 1440p, whether that be native or upscaled performance. So in terms of cost per frame at current pricing, the RX 9070 is offering the most value, but there is a little bit more to this matchup. The 9070 for example has 16GB of VRAM, which we consider to be the minimum now when spending over $400 US on a GPU, and sadly the RTX 5070 only comes with 12GB. That said, the RTX 5070 has slightly superior upscaling quality and game support with DLSS4 versus FSR4, and when those latest upscaling techniques aren't available, it's an easy win for GeForce as DLSS2 and 3 are far superior to FSR2 and 3, especially at resolutions you're likely to use, such as 1440p. The RTX 5070 is also faster in heavy ray tracing games, especially those that use path tracing, though it has to be said the RTX 5070 isn't exactly impressive in heavy RT titles. And once again, the 12 gigabyte VRAM capacity is becoming a problem here, so I wouldn't say this is a huge strength of the 5070. At the end of the day, the RTX 5070 and RX 9070 are very evenly matched, so again, it will come down to pricing and availability in your region. My personal preference would be for the Radeon RX 9070 for no other reason than it has 16 gigabytes of VRAM, and the assumption here being that whichever one of these I end up picking, I am going to keep it for at least the next four years, and I suspect the Radeon GPU will age better due to that extra VRAM, and with no real differences between the two right now, that's a safe enough bet for me. Now the next tier has quite a large price discrepancy between the competing parts, and that's because by some miracle, the Radeon RX 9070 XT has hit its MSRP, at least at the time of making this video. AMD has warned that GPU pricing will increase soon, so if you want a GPU, and in particular a 9070 XT, I recommend you snap one up right now. The good news is, $600 US is an amazing price for this product, at least based on current generation pricing, and $600 US is of course the advertised MSRP for this part, it's just taken some 8 months since release to get back to it. So as it stands right now, you're looking at having to spend 25% more for the RTX 5070 Ti, and the GeForce GPU simply isn't worth the price premium, not even close. In terms of performance, they're very similar overall. The RTX 5070 Ti does have the edge for heavy ray tracing titles, but as we've found recently, RT performance doesn't unanimously favor the GeForce GPU. Both models feature 16 gigabytes of VRAM, both are very power efficient, both support high quality upscaling techniques, so given all of that, as the pricing currently stands, this one is a very easy pick for me, the Radeon RX 9070 XT all day. Probably the dumbest GPU to come out of this generation, certainly the dumbest high-end GPU, would have to be the GeForce RTX 5080. 
NVIDIA set the MSRP at $1,000 US, and you can currently get one for that price, but really, why would you? That is a 33% premium over the RTX 5070 Ti for a mere 15% performance increase. And worse still, it's nearly 70% more expensive than the Radeon RX 9070 XT for less than a 20% performance improvement. So then, the RTX 5080 has never been a good high-end GPU. People simply bought them because the RTX 5070 Ti was also overpriced, or because of the name. The GeForce 80 series from NVIDIA has typically been a bit special, but the 5080 has certainly sullied that reputation. That means the only high-end GPU from this generation worth getting excited about, at least in terms of performance, is the mighty GeForce RTX 5090, but it's really only worth getting excited about if you have cash to burn. With an MSRP of $2,000 US, that's really a dream price for this model, as it's almost always been priced well above that, and even today the cheapest models are still up around $2,800, but most are even well above that. That's it really, the RTX 5090 is the best of the best, and sadly there is nothing AMD has that can challenge it, so as usual, NVIDIA wins this category by default. And that's going to do it for our final Best of GPUs video of 2025. This installment of the series was far more enjoyable than the previous version I made in late 2024 where we were in desperate need of a new generation. This current generation has been in a way very disappointing, but there have been some bright spots. The budget end of the market has improved more than what we've seen in previous generations, and that's in spite of the 8GB VRAM curse that AMD and Nvidia has cast on gamers. The Arca B580 finally hitting $250 and being readily available at that price is some good news, and I think we can say it's better late than never on that one. The 8GB 9060 XT selling below MSRP is also some good news, but the real bright spot here for budget gamers is the 16GB 9060 XT for $350. And yeah, it's a bit more expensive than past models, but when you adjust for inflation, it's a pretty solid deal when compared to the past much-loved models. The 9070 XT hitting $600 is probably the best news out of all of this, and by current generation standards, that really is an amazing buy. Of course, in the grand scheme of things, it is only single digits faster than the previous generation RTX 4070 Ti Super, and both pack 16GB of VRAM, and that particular GeForce GPU was released back in January of 2024 for $800 US, so it's a 25% discount after almost two years. Uh, certainly not terrible, but you know, it's not amazing either. All of that said though, it sounds as though this might be as good as things are going to get for a while. We've just seen DRAM pricing skyrocket due to demand from AI companies, and AMD has just announced internally that this will affect pricing for future GPU shipments, meaning prices of all graphics cards are set to rise. So if you've been holding out for a part like a 9070 XT to hit MSRP, I'd suggest you wait no longer. It doesn't sound like they're getting any cheaper, and instead the opposite is likely to happen. There's been plenty of challenges for PC builders over the past few years, and sadly things only look to be getting worse. Whereas historically, we've warned you about buying something right now because in the coming months there'd be a new generation or some new thing being released that will either discount existing hardware or offer you, you know, more performance at a similar price point. But as things stand right now, we really do suggest that if you have the money and you're in need of an upgrade, you just go ahead and get it done now because, yeah, there are some warning signs out there that it's only going to get worse and you'd hate to um, miss MSRP graphics cards, even if you do have to pay a bit more for your DDR5 memory, for example, if you're doing a full system build or upgrade or whatever it may be. Anyway, all I can really say is good luck shopping. Hopefully you get what you're after and you have a lot of fun gaming on it. But that is going to do it for this video. So if you liked it, you're not to do. Subscribe for more content. We also have the join button or Patreon if you want to get some uh, great hardware unbox access to stuff like our exclusive Discord server for members only. We do a monthly live stream for members only. Uh, there's behind the scenes content, Q&A stuff. There's a lot of cool things there. So check that out if you're interested. But if not, that's perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.